Let's take a look at the next question. Yeah, by all means. Why are you looking to invest in something like this? Question number three. Why are you looking to invest in something like this? Okay, so let's let's do this by um, giving you a good example. All right. Uh, my wife is an artist, and she recently bought a digital camera to take pictures of her art. And it's a very specific type of art. You, you know Nancy and her art. It's glass. Right. Right. Okay. And so what happens is it has to be visually attractive, and shooting glass is difficult, et cetera, et cetera. So we went to the camera shop, and I thought, I'm going to stand back and watch this guy. It was unbelievable. <laughs> I was shocked because here's what he said. Before I can recommend the camera that might work, let me ask you a few questions. The most striking question was, what are you going to use the camera for? What are you going to be shooting, and what will you do with the images? Which is good. Well, he was asking, what are you trying to accomplish well, exactly, through exactly. this purchase? This is good. Yeah. See, so if I were a sales manager, I'd come back and I'd sit down with my salesperson. I'd say, what did you find out that they're trying to accomplish with mm -hmm. this camera? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And let them back into understanding the importance of asking the question, what are you trying to accomplish? Because it, it, we had an interesting thing happen. So, but, but, but I mean, to get this straight, you liked what he was doing. It was you? wonderful. I mean, I was. That's what I was it was say. awesome. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I, this this guy was as good as I've ever seen. As opposed to saying, "Well, we've got this model, we got that model, we got this model. This would cost three hundred. Oh. This cost two hundred. He's trying to drill down to find out why you want it and how he can match yes. what he's got with what you want. We have a blog entry where uh, in, in our new blog, which has just been very successful and very well received. We've got six of our people at the Brooks Group writing for the blog and one of them showed me his blog entry. He wanted to buy a tennis racket and he went in and he never had played tennis for the last 20 years. So this young fellow came up to him and, and he said, well, uh, uh, can I help you? See, I'm looking for a tennis racket. I haven't played for a while. The guy said, well, uh, let's go look at the tennis racket. So they went over there and they're looking around and this guy was going to spend 60 or 70 dollars. He ended up leaving. Uh, the guy said, I don't, I don't know anything about tennis. Maybe I can get somebody who can. He said that. Yeah, and, and the thing went down the tubes. You see, <laughs> the, the truth of the matter is that <laughs> if you will just get this information mm -hmm. before it happens or face-to-face -face early in the process, you're not going to be chasing the wrong rabbit. Question number four. Please. What are you trying to accomplish through this purchase? What are you trying to accomplish through this purchase? Now, this may take some digging. So let's role play this for a minute. All right. Let's say that uh, I'm selling you uh, contracting equipment, heavy industrial equipment. Okay. You're a contractor. So I asked you, this is similar but a little bit different from the third question. All right. All right. Rick, let me ask you this. Uh, with these front end loaders that you're looking to purchase, mm -hmm. what are you trying to accomplish with the purchase? Well, the front end, we've got a major construction project that is coming up, and uh, we've got to, to uh, construct a building in the next year on, a, on about a three-acre site. And that's why we need the front end loaders in order to help us accomplish that. All right. Let me ask you another question, Rick, if I might. How critical is the financial side of this? And by that, let me ask you this. What do you have in inventory now in terms of equipment? Well, the first thing is, is we found that this site uh, demands more work from us than we thought it was going to. And so we have two front end loaders and we need at least double that, that amount. Okay. Uh, do you normally lease or purchase? Um, normally lease. Okay. Now think about this. I should have already known if they lease by asking the previous questions. Mm -hmm. Now that then helps me to say, okay, they got a project coming up. I know what it is. They need the front end loaders, but I'm not in the front end loader business. And, and, and obviously, lease is not the answer you want to hear because you're trying to sell front end loaders. Okay. But, but if, if I have a, a good relationship with my lender, I'm still mm -hmm. going to make some money. All right. See, that's unique to that business. Okay. But here's the point I'm making to you these things build. And the more I know, it allows me now to paint a picture that says this is what they'll buy, when they'll buy, how they'll buy, under what conditions they will buy, or I can't help them. If you can't help them, what do you think the most integrity-based thing to do is? Recommend somebody who can, because mm -hmm. I believe the miracle of 34th Street is alive and well. It comes back to you. The universe gives you what you give it. But if you're going to jam a round peg in a square hole, these are really bad questions, because you don't like the answers you get. 
what you tend to do is you tend to be a pitch man who goes in there and just hits them with everything. Remember the old guy that used to be on television when you and I were very young? Tell you what I'm going to do and he roll his sleeves up. Right. Okay, You don't want to be one of those. Let's look at the next question. Okay. Who else other than you, of course, is involved in this decision? Who else other than you, of course, which of course is a flattering thing to say, is involved in this decision? All right. Let me ask you a question, Rick. Why do you think as a sales manager, sales executive, I need to know that? from my salespeople and make sure that they have asked those questions of the prospect. Well, the main, the main thing is is that then you are expanding your, your possibilities. Because if, if, if you're thinking that the guy that you're talking to or the woman you're talking to is the only one that you need to be dealing with, and you find out, in fact, there are one or two others, I think that you've increased your possibilities. Is that Absolutely. Yeah. See, what I want to find out is I want to find out, do I need to get in front of these other people? Right. If I already know the process, because I remember the early question? Mm -hmm. I now can build my presentation. I know that they're going to be making a decision in three weeks, which means I need to get in front of them before three weeks. I need to find out in that process if they're going to be having a meeting and having vendors like me come in and make a presentation. In other words, I am gathering information which allows me to do more than make a sale. It allows me to understand their philosophy, their strategy. It allows me to develop a strategy, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Make sense? Makes sense to me. Absolutely, absolutely critical. And question number six, what is the single biggest problem you're looking to solve? In the final analysis, Rick, people buy things to solve problems. Pain is a great source of motivation. <laughs> find right? the pain. Find, find the pain. Find the pain. By the same token, they also buy for profit and pleasure and peace of mind and avarice and greed and, you know, a whole bunch of other reasons. But in the final analysis, people will move faster if they have a problem or a pain they're trying to resolve. You need to ask your salespeople when they come back from a sales call or before they go on the sales call if they've been able to glean the information for example on the phone, what is the single biggest problem that these people are trying to fix? Think about this for a minute. The average presentation consists of, consists of six to eight features or benefits. 24 hours later the average prospect remembers one. They remember a bunch of misinformation. They don't buy for lots of reasons. Think about this for a second. Most people will buy something for one or two reasons. Not five or six or seven or eight. And your salespeople need to know so they can make an application-based presentation that allows them just to look at that problem. Now, what if they, you, you ask the question, what is the main problem you're trying to solve? And the problem they're trying to solve has nothing to do with what you're trying to sell. Then you don't have a prospect. And, 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 which, which is why I really suggested that the best thing you can do is to do this before you get there because you're not burning up valuable sales mm -hmm. time. And you can ask these same questions to somebody on the phone. But you were saying, you were saying earlier, don't let a negative answer to a question necessarily derail the process. That's why there are 10. All right. So, but if you get this answer, and the answer is the problem, the answer is my problem is X and you sell Y, you don't bail, you're, not, you're not telling me you bail at that point, right? No, because what I have to do is be astute enough to say, okay, is the answer that this person just gave me a symptom or is it the cause? You may have a product that solves the cause. They think they need to buy something that's going to eliminate mm -hmm. the symptoms. Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand. So, so there's a big difference, and that's why really good salespeople plug in like that. Mm -hmm. And, and at, the, at the very least, even if even if you sell Y, they want X, you can maybe find somebody who can solve X for them and you stay on their radar screen. Yes. So that down the line, perhaps they do have a problem that you can deal with. 